Hey guys, welcome to today's episode, and I'm super excited. We have Warren Phillips. He is a published scientist, and now he's turned into the non-toxic dad. Warren, you are such a busy guy. What got you into the non-toxic dad like you didn't have enough stuff to do? Yeah, so I, I, I had no intention. I was completely off social media um, because of uh, the non-toxic lifestyle I live. I just felt like that it was a distraction from um, pushing me towards my goals. I think your audience understands that. Like there's energy, right? And you have time and energy and and there's consequences to every action and unintended consequences, you know, with relationships. So I'm like, oh man, I'm, I completely got off social media like six years ago. I was never going to be that guy, right? But I got sick over 20 plus 2003 to 2005 is when my symptoms started. I got sick. I was cleaning up as, an, as a scientist, I was a geologist. I got my master's degree and I studied the effects of heavy metals on the environment, animals, plants, humans, um, dealing with abandoned mine cleanup. And I got poisoned, long story short, poisoned um, from heavy metals, environmental toxins, leading to massive symptoms, eye twitching, abnormal shyness, weight gain, anxiety, 10 different doctors, medical doctors, end of story, of course, no answers, pain med, psychotropic drugs, hopelessness at 25, no life, no hope, no future. Um, fast forward that, you know, um, to the point where I didn't want to live, had hope and faith, a faith-based guy, I think, as you know, um, had that hope that uh, God was going to do something with this pain. And um, if I could stick with it, if I could be gritty enough, like I all-American athlete, like all those things, if I could tap into that grit, into that, um, and into that power of my faith and that spiritual energy, I could get through it. And I did. And my life did get restored and I do have a family and all the dreams and hopes that I lost. I lost the weight, you know, I, I, my testosterone levels naturally rose so I can make decisions and be on a podcast like this and look you in the eye. When I was sick, I couldn't look you in the eye. I couldn't make a decision. I'd be petrified to be on camera as a matter of fact. And now I don't even care because I have restored my hormones to a place where I have a, a normal life and I'm getting better each and every day, just like everyone else. So non-toxic dad was built out of the necessity, the information that I've learned from coaching practitioners, because once I found out that these toxins are worse in our environment than they were with me cleaning up hazardous waste for a living in our homes and in couches and our flooring and our particle board and, you know, in our food and in the air and in our water and, you know, in all these different places, I'm like, oh my gosh, I measured this stuff in the environment. We spent millions of dollars cleaning it up and it's worse in our homes. It's worse in our schools with moldy schools and just like all this stuff, I'm like, and it's the root cause of so many of our problems. It's at the core of the 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 jacking up of 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 humans of, of America and our mindsets. And it's so linked to cancer and obesity and genetic changes within our gut and within our bodies. Like it's such a well researched area, and we know the problem, yet we never focus on the solution, which is removing the amount of toxins coming into our life. And so that our body can naturally and be tough and get through all this. So what I did is I'm like, okay, someone challenged me, you know, a long time ago and I never did it. And they said, Warren, they gave me these little stamps. I could actually pull it out of the drawer right now. Someone gave me a stamp once. I can't find it. Maybe I can't. Here it is. First time I've ever shown this on a, on a broadcast, but someone gave me this Warren approved thing like 10 years ago. And WA Warren approved because I was so anal about everything. They went and stamped and put stickers all over my house just being funny. But out of that funniness came out the, that not everyone is educated about this stuff, that people are watching this and don't understand that the reason their child's behavior is, is rough and it's such a challenging to parent that child is the amount of toxins and food colorings and um, hormone disruption that's going on in that young person. And there's tons of research showing that. Um, there's even new literature. I just did some videos on this and released it and how uh, plasticizers affect um, behavior, right, in children um, and ADHD and autistic children as well, but in all children, right? And so that being said, non-toxic dad, I just start shooting these videos and I realized, oh my gosh, millions of views. I'm reaching millions of people with the very message that I was trying to use, tell people about before through other means by coaching practitioners and trying to go that route that when I got on camera um, and just start sharing these simple changes, I mean, wow, um, the amount of impact. And Chantel, you are the, you love this stuff too, because you got 
several years ago, you know, you woke up to this and you're doing the same. It's like people need to know this information. Therefore, thus non-toxic dad and doing it for love, doing it for um, education and, and seeing people just exposed to information. It's not about guilt and shame. It's just about, about coming aware. You know, we made mistakes in the past. That's in our past. We made bad choices in the past. That's in our past. What choices can we make today, this week, this month, changing our water, changing our shampoos, different things that we can do, changing our makeup, the toxins that we're putting on our body, changing our air quality up, how we sleep, where we sleep, the quality of our sleep, these little things that we can work on on a weekly, monthly, or even bi-monthly basis, we can absolutely change our lives. Well, you and I are both on the hunt for less toxic ways to live. And, you know, one of the problems I still struggle with a little bit is with my scalp. And so I'm always looking for the best shampoo that has the least amount of toxins. Um, But, you know, we have friends that have said, hey, I don't even use shampoo, like cut shampoo altogether. What is your thoughts? Have you found any shampoos that you love? Are you just like, let's diss the shampoo? Well, you know, I'm lucky that I have a local guy down the street who's super non-toxic lifestyle and he's made his own super fragrance, completely fragrance-free, amazing shampoos. When I do use it, there's a a few other brands out there um, that are are, are fairly clean. You can find them that that if you can't eat it or pronounce it, don't put it on your hair. And there's only going to be a handful of brands that are out there. So it is difficult. But what I found, like I didn't even I didn't even know no shampoo existed, no poo, and probably until uh, someone introduced me to it or mentioned it a year ago, and I just like kind of blew it off. Like it was, I was still locked into the matrix that our hair is dirty and greasy, and had this mindset that we had to shampoo our hair, right? And when you post stuff like that, I bet you they stink. I bet you their hair is greasy and nasty. I bet you they're just gross. Like this is the stuff that comes out, but. I've seen Stephen Wright's hair. There's a video that we did together. It is amazing. It's not greasy. He's not stinky. And I have lots of friends who know poo now. It's like when you focus on finding people that are no poo, they come out of the, the woodworks because people are ashamed of the no shampoo because of the, the dirty stigma. It's almost like if you don't use bleach in your house, you're a dirty mom, right? If you don't put shampoo in your, in your hair, you're a dirty girl. You're a dirty boy. But that's not true. I, out of necessity stopped using shampoo probably over a year ago. And I didn't even think about the no poo method because my scalp was getting really itchy and it was getting flaky. And I'm like, ow, my scalp actually hurts. I don't know if it all started with me doing a a vinegar wash with too high or something like that, doing another no poo method with vinegar, or somehow I irritated my scalp to the point. My only option was no shampoo. And no shampoo was the only solution to my scalp irritation. And now I rarely wash my hair. And if you think about it, do you wash your baby's hair all the time? When you do, it irritates their scalp. It causes rashes and and it it hurts them, right? Especially these toxic baby shampoos that are full full of chemicals seeping into their body. Let's not even go there. But with my daughter, we just been using water, right? And then if we need to, I'll put a little tiny bit of soap if she had some scalp irritation or something but just really, really gentle, non-toxic, like coconut based and just use a toothbrush on like a small area. But other than that, this girl has never had her shampoo in her hair and it is beautiful and shiny and it smells good and she smells good, right? Why would we put these toxins on a baby? But let's move that up. And a lot of moms don't, it's okay not to shampoo your, your daughter's baby's hair, but why isn't it okay not to shampoo our hair? Right. What if someone says to you, look, I go to the gym, my hair is super greasy. There's no way I couldn't use shampoo. I have to use something to yeah. get oil out of my hair. What would you say? I mean, if you're not, it's just like anything else. It's like, are you willing to work through the hard times to get to the end result? And the answer may not be no. So if you're not going to uh, take the time to let your micro- microbiome balance, your natural oils in your hair to come into balance, and I think you need to be living a relatively non-toxic lifestyle probably to be able to address the skin microbiome, the hair microbiome. It's so all connected, right? We have millions of bacteria everywhere and they're different here than they are here than they are here and then they are here and, you know, and they are here, you know, everywhere, right? They're different. Um, so you have to be eating and dressing in a non-toxic way for your body really to come into balance. And that takes some time. But 
what I would what I would say is there's there's the egg method. There's the there's a vinegar rinse method. You can also get uh, some non toxic shampoos that are ones that you could eat and you could do it sparingly, right? Um, because I even know my mom. Like growing up, she's like, I don't wash my hair that often because when I do, it not only is it a lot of work, but it 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 kind of hurts my scalp and stuff. So I would I would recommend you know, doing it sparingly and trying to minimize the amounts of times you're washing your hair. And maybe just maybe over time, you want to go super crunchy. Um, and you, there's super crunchy, there's bougie crunchy, and there's like kind of crunchy. And then there's, you know, the non-country, you know, crunchy I'm person, bougie, right? I'm bougie crunchy. I'm, I'm more, I'm a little, I'm, I'm probably more in the bougie crunchy, you know, um, the type as well, even though I'm non-toxic dad and I'm not super crunchy, like not all my clothes are organic and and non dyed and and brown and you know pastels and you know all that. Maybe someday I'll go super crunchy. If I buy a farm, which would be my dream, um, got some goats, some cows, and I would do a great job as a farmer. Um, you watch, you know, and uh, then maybe I'll go super crunchy. So you just want to when you are washing your hair, just get rid of the carcinogenic chemicals, the hormone mimics, um, and throughout all your routine and specifically your hair. It's going right into your skin, you know, hot water, you're showering. It's not just your hair, but it's over, all over your skin. And there's so much marketing around it right now. I even shot a video on this that they, they make it look like it's natural. And they'll say natural fragrance, right? So it'll say um, peppermint oil. But before that, it'll say perfume, right? And that's one of my biggest, we're talking about a big toxin that I think it's having a massive effect on our hormones carcinogenically um, active, you know, um, the phthalates that usually travel along with fragrance to, to keep it, um, it, it helps it stay stinky, if you will, right? They put a lot of phthalates in with it, that, that uh, petrochemical, and it's, it just wrecks, wreaks havoc on your testosterone levels, which stop us from living life to the fullest, right? And then we get TRT therapy and, you know, to cover that up and like all this stuff, but I am, you know, strict on trying your best no matter what it is, try to remove the toxins so that your body can naturally restore itself. It's the best way to anti-age, if you will. I don't think we age. I think we get more toxic. I just looked at my, I'm getting my Italian citizenship from my grandfather. My great-grandfather, 96 or 95 years old. My grandfather, 97 years old, right? Um, who came, came from Italy. Like these, and then I remember my great-grandma. I can remember sitting down with her. She was 99 in Italian and playing cards and walking up the stairs, right? These people live the non-toxic lifestyle, right? What's the difference? We live a toxic lifestyle today. So whether it's your shampoo, the skin lotion you're putting on, if you can't eat it, do not put it on your skin, your hair, your nails, wherever it is. And then if you're bougie crunchy, you get a healthy lifestyle, you make your choices, you live with them, and you watch your health and adjust accordingly. And I have a friend that makes her own dry shampoo that's all- Dry oily. shampoo is good. Yeah. yeah. So you can do that if it gets oily. I'll put that in the show notes. That's really amazing. So tell us the four ingredients that you would say that are in shampoo that you're like, this is an absolute no. Would it be like sodium lauryl sulfate or fragrance or parabens? What are you like? Absolutely not. One, two, three, four. Okay. So, I, I'm, so there's- so there's a lot of toxic things they put into shampoo, but some of the big ones that I think show up a lot, almost in every commercial grade shampoo is going to be SLS, sodium lauryl sulfate. And there's a lot of research on that and how it at least at the very minimum affects, affects your microbiome and causes itchy scalp and scalp irritation. And then there's, if you go a little bit deeper, yes, there's always the, the carcinogenic effect, but dimethicone, I'm trying to pronounce it correctly, which is essentially silicone that shows up, kind of gives you the shiny feel. And my least favorite, right? And then there's always the parabens. If you see any type of paraben, and it can be named a bunch of different things, but parabens also carcinogenic, top on my list. And my least favorite, my least favorite, because you bother yourself, your own hormone disruption, you give your own self brain inflammation, um, hormone mimicking with the phthalates that usually run with fragrances as chemical fragrance, parfum. So if it says um, fragrance or parfum, you just get rid of it. Everything that has that, as a matter of fact, that's a big biohack for your life. You could be doing all the biohacks in the world, but you get rid of all perfume, parfum, um, fragrances, chemical fragrances, your life will elevate a nice percentage. For some in you, 
for some of you, it'll, it'll give you like a 50% lift, some 10, some 5, depending on your sensitivity level and how much fragrance is in your life. But man, that fragrance is not only toxic to you, it's toxic to your friend. Think about it this way. Your brain can only, your brain can only focus on so many bits of information. And if you're a no fragrance person and you walk down the street of someone who just got a fresh shampoo done, right? Their hair is going to smell for weeks of that fragrance and you'll be able to smell it. They'll be able to, they probably don't smell it at all because they're used to it because your brain can only focus on so much information at a time, but they're a walking chemical factory that's poisoning themselves and others everywhere they go and they don't even know it because their brain shuts down. There's so much fragrance in their home and life. It's like, I need to focus on more important things, not on this fragrance that I'm smelling all the time. But if you're a no, no fume, no perfume, no fragrance person, it hits you like a ton of bricks. I met, I saw a guy that had cologne in, uh, in Whole Foods the other day. I couldn't get him out of my nose for a couple hours. I and mean, this is how it just staining and sticking. Like if you hug somebody and you go home and like, where's that fragrance coming from? That's the same stuff that's in your hair products. Mm. And I want to really encourage you guys to do this no poo challenge, no shampoo at all. And I will give you my free recipe for dry shampoo. I can actually make it myself. It actually just has arrowroot powder, bentonite clay, a little bit of unsweetened cocoa powder to give it a little bit of color for those of you who are like brunette like me. And if you want to add a tiny bit of essential oil and you can literally just make dry shampoo, get rid of that oil and take his no shampoo challenge. Yeah. And it's great that you're making your own um, because a lot of these no shampoos, uh, with these dry shampoos, they have fragrance in them and then in chemicals that aren't safe. But you make, you can make one. It literally, you could eat, right? You just said it. You could eat that stuff, right? And it would be good for you. So you can put it on your scalp. That's beautiful. Yeah. Well, let's also talk a little bit about, you know, everyone's in a rush right now. And I'm seeing when, when I was at the grocery store the other day, I was looking at someone's cart and they were in the freezer section and it was literally everything they had in there was like microwavable meals. And it was just, everything in there it was microwavable, this microwavable, that. I want you to talk about how toxic those are and what are some of the things that you're saying, hey, listen, if someone wants to not have a home cooked meal, maybe make it easier, but get rid of those microwavable meals. Yeah, I think you've been lied to to think that it's faster, right? Um, because it's not only you can plan accordingly and do really well, it maybe does save some time in the short term. But in the long term, it's impacting your health, the health of your family, the behavior of you, the, your ability to handle stress, work. Like So in the end, it's, it's the unintended consequences of microwave food is not going to end well for you from just on a nutritional standpoint. But if I was going to say one thing that bothers me the most about this food is that it's in plastic and it is putting microplastics into your food and your microwaving food, which does change the chemistry and the energy. And as we learn more about science, the energy of our food and our water and the rotation of the, the spin of the molecules changes, especially with, with certain chemicals, um, with microwave, and you're putting an energy that's not natural into that food. And the food's not natural. Let's talk about it. There's preservatives. There's things in there that are not going to work with your body that aren't going to, it's going to cause your body work to get rid of the toxins in the food versus adding energy and life to your cells. They're taking it away. And lot, some of the food is actually dead food. But my biggest scare today, because of the amount of microplastic, be because the science is now catching up, they literally have found these microplastics. We eat like a, what is it, like a credit card uh, a week now, um, and then like a big bowl in a year of microplastics. And so we need to lower, it's impossible because we're now breathing it, especially from rubber tires. Where do they go? I got to get new tires this year. Where did the rubber go? It's up in the atmosphere. We're breathing that stuff. Bowls of plastic, a big bowl of plastic a year. So. We need to cut back on the amount of microplastics that are now going in deep into our organs and tissues, not just our lungs. They used to see it in our lungs, vaginally, believe it or not, is where they're finding them a lot in your, you know, air where you eat, breathe, like uh, stomach, intestines, right? And, um, and again, your, your colon and all that. But now they're finding it deep in all your organs, especially um, and even in your heart. And when it's, and it's known to cause inflammation, what is inflammation in the heart? Is that good or bad? No. Think heart attacks, think cancer, think those sorts of things. When you have this foreign substance now embedded in your tissue and as your body's trying to protect that, 
it can lead to all kinds of inflammatory issues and inflammation is the root cause of all disease. So don't microwave your stuff, man. Even if your body was strong enough to handle some toxins every once in a while, those microplastics build up just like heavy metals, glyphosate and other toxins that we're exposed to. Just eliminate it. I want to talk to you guys about stress for just a second. And I feel like I've been just juggling so many responsibilities, the endless to-do list. And I'm telling you, stress slowly infiltrates your life and it robs you of magnesium. So it's a vital mineral for your body. And it's this vicious stress magnesium deficiency cycle. So it's like number one, stress strikes, then your body loses magnesium then your sleep is kind of plummeted and then more magnesium escapes your body. So I want to tell you magnesium breakthrough, it has seven forms of magnesium, which is really, really important. Most of them have one or two forms. I take two before bedtime every single night. If I forget it, I then can't sleep as well. So if you look at my sleep scores, they are amazing. That is one thing I really have dialed in. And I want you to go to magbreakthrough.com slash waste away. Click on waste away for 10% off any order. And we have several people for a limited time only that are going to receive special gifts with purchase. So it's only available at magbreakthrough.com slash waste away. Let's talk about some things that now are banned in Japan and Europe, but they're sold in the USA. I just heard that wheat thins are banned in Japan and Europe. What do you know about that? Well, I just had an interesting conversation about that. There is a lot of legitimate things that in the US that are banned and not, you know, that are more simplified there for ingredients in the EU and in Japan and versus the American version. Skittles would be another example. Um, So there is, that is real, right? And I think, I'm not sure why that's the case. I mean, America is money driven. So I would say that most of these other countries are more connected to the earth um, and, and foundations. In EU, they definitely won't allow the, the junk and plastic that cows are eating in industrial farms to show up um, in, in, into our industrial meat, which is why another reason our meat is so toxic. So in Europe, they don't do that. They preserve some of the culture, right? And so Japan's the same way. There's a certain spirituality, right? There's a cert- certain honor to food that we don't have. So that's why they can make these decisions and their governments, it's part of their culture. For us, we're more money-driven, uh, shelf-stable, longer shelf life. So some of these chemicals stay in there. But one of the cutesy things that they do is they just rename it, spin the chemical, and they're still using it. So there is that aspect of it. I just been kind of going down that rabbit trail, right? With some of the food colorings, they have the food coloring, they spin it, right? They ban BPA like we did here in the US and a lot of things, right? Or we start marketing BPA-free, but there's bisphenol S in there, which is also maybe worse for infertility. And it still causes obesity. It still causes problems. So we, we, we tell America, yeah, we cleaned up our wheat thins. We cleaned up our plastic bottles and it's BPA-free. Well, now, heck, it's BPS. It's just another chemical. Hashtag they win. Hashtag cost them probably less for that chemical. They found another way to get what they wanted, and to make you happy. Let's talk about avocado oil and olive oil. I feel like at this point, people know those two oils are really the stronger oils, that and coconut oil. But now we're finding out you've got to be really particular because a lot of them are being mixed in with cheaper oils. So how do you, you know, then you get frustrated because you're like, man, I, I can't even trust this. How do you know if the avocado oil or the olive oil is a good one? And you really need to call the company up and and ask. And I don't I don't I don't have that list with me at the moment. Um, but a lot of the companies, there is good ones out there, right? But the organic ones are typically going to be your safer your safer oils across the board, right? Single source origin. So for olive oil, it, it's really when, when you're importing something, right? And I've, I've talked, I know people who import. They, they can label stuff. It's not organic. They label it as organic and it still gets over. It happens all the time. It's dirty. It's nasty. It happens because they know that they're buying off a non-organic farmer. 
their labeling is organic and selling it for buku bucks. It's just like the black market, right? So you really, when you get single origin olive from single origin olive uh, the locations, it's not this mixed old oil that they sell it and they buy it cheaply. So there's a bunch of extra olive oil from all these harvests and there's tanks of it and they're selling it cheap to Spectrum and who else there. And it's this mixed olive oil. They could be mixing in the the chances of that getting mixed and cut with canola oil and other oils and industrial seed oils is higher. So you want these companies that are single source, single region. You really know it's coming from these trees in Greece, these trees in Italy. Um, and it became a big problem in Italy. A lot of cut oils over there as well. And they were selling it even internally. So you just got to know that it's single origin, single source, and make sure that they can track it. Right. But even then, right, even then. There could be a little switch up of paperwork over in Mexico or over in China and you're still screwed, right? So you just really need to ask those hard questions. But usually organic, single source, know where it's coming from. A lot of the times, a lot of these companies literally go over and they know the groves. They know the avocados they're getting. They're, they're having the sustainable um, side and they actually visit the farms or they own the farms. Then they know like this is my oil. They're not buying it from uh, a big storage house. And, you know, bartering this on on the fair trade market. We got some coconut oil. I mean, all of, you know, sorry, uh, avocado oil. It's, it's getting bad. It's been here for two years. We'll give you a deal on it. You don't know what they dumped into there to, and, and selling it because no one's checking it, right? Um, so you just got to work with these ethic, ethical companies that aren't looking for bottom line and the cheapest and to get that better markup. They're actually doing it because they care and they care about the environment and they care about the quality of their products. Let's talk about bread for a second. I had a friend of mine who just got back from France and I have another one that came back from Italy and we were talking about, she said that, you know, they eat their bread fresh every single day. And then by the second day, you'll see bread one day old is marked down by 50%. And that's and done on day three. That's it. It's, yeah. it. They're done. Like it's day one, day two, it's 50% and you're done. So what is your opinion on bread? finding the best bread and what are you on the lookout for? So bread is a, is a very touchy subject. There's the no gluten people, right? There's the, you know, gluten in moderation um, people. There's the uh, emmer wheat, ancient grain folks. That once you visit a country like Italy and, and, and France and you have the anecdotal evidence that when you go there, I eat the grain and I'm fine. I'm not bloated. I'm not four sizes bigger, you know, because I eat this stuff. Because it has much less gluten for sure. And when you get a foreign protein, right, um, in your body, you're going to, and that's what this hybridized wheat is. They won Nobel Prizes for this stuff. Wow, we're going to save the world. But really, we cut away from a tradition. This goes back into the, the um, like in Japan and in Europe and in Italy and France, they actually care about the source and origin. They don't want to change it. This is part of their culture, part of their identity of who they are. So they use these ancient grains that are connected to the land and it comes from this region and you can literally taste it in the soils. They're regenerative farmers over there. So the uptake in nature is naturally supplying phosphorus and nitrogen and minerals and the food and the grain tastes so much better and it's so much more nutrient dense and healthy. So you're getting more nutrients over there, right? You're getting the vitamins and minerals that'll help you break down and energize, give you the energy that you need to break down these sugars, right? You eat a wheat here, let's not even talk about, you know, just a, a, a good organic wheat, but it has a lot of gluten, but it's not, it has more gluten, one, because it's a hybridized grain. It's not an ancient grain like emmer wheat or a, a wheat from, from Europe, but it also is a hybridized version of an organic, not, not GMO. We're talking regular old hybridized grain that has, that's easier to grow, that can take the wind and it doesn't get blown down and all those things that they bred into the, the wheat, but you have all these gluten strains, but you're not, it's not grown regeneratively, right? So it doesn't have the minerals and nutrients in it. So when you eat that sugar and are exposed to those extra gluten, it takes energy to deal with all that. And there's just, it's not as full of the very things your cell needs to make energy and process the sugar. So it's almost like an anti-nutrient. Your body has to ramp up a lot of processes to deal with the extra sugar and it's not coming with the minerals right? And it's not coming with the things your body need to process it. So that's an issue. Um, but for me, that's why if I do go to Europe, like I said earlier, I, I'm getting my Italian citizenship, you know, I will eat some 
bread and grains every year. Here, I eat it sparingly. And if I do, I'm going to do, you know, a sourdough, an organic sourdough, hopefully um, from Emmer or an ancient grain from Europe, if I can, right? Um, I don't, I'm not going to say I'm perfect because I'm not, I'm not that guy. You know, I, I live a, you know, I'm in the top 0.1%, but to be honest, you know, all of us will make some compromise at certain times because our body can handle it. So, if I get, if I eat some sourdough bread, right, I, I will, it will affect me if it's not ancient grains. I'll feel the bloat. It will cause some indigestion and those gluten things, those, the, the, the proteins that I'm not used to will definitely cause that inflammation, joint pain, wrist pain, knuckle pain. Just be cognizant of your body, right? If you eat bread and you get joint pain, you're, you're suffering a consequence. Your wrists are sore. You can blame it on your cell phone. You can blame it on a bad night's sleep. You can blame it on that glass of wine that you had with it, which can also cause inflammation. But it might be the inflammation coming from, from all those different unknown gluten proteins that are rolling around. Yeah. So let's talk about the most important things that you're going to say. If you, you know, sometimes people say, I'm not doing everything organic. I'll do some things organic. What are your top three things that you're like, this, we have to do organic? Your, your underwear, for sure. Your underwear and your t-shirts. Why? Your skin is eating everything you put on it. It's your, it's a, it's an eating organ. It's a mouth, if you will. And it's your largest organ. So whatever you're putting on it, make sure you can eat it, right? And if you're going to be, try to avoid all the polyethylene and all the different plastic and uh, petroleum-based toxic things you're putting on your body, that is going in your skin. These little microplastics are working their way into your body. You're adding to that microplastic load because you're wrapping yourself in saran wrap for crying out loud. So put an organic layer at least between you and the toxin. So you're creating a, a barrier. So organic underwear because it's eating, your skin is eating that stuff. If you're wearing these polyethylene underwear, it's like essentially birth control you know, to, to your body causing hormone dysregulation. Just don't do that. Now, if we're talking foods. Um, well, let's see eat... there for just a second. Okay, yeah. let's go there. Yeah. I love Lululemon. I'm just a big Lululemon fan. I wear, I know, I wear Lululemon uh, leggings all the time and they have gotten a really bad rap right now for the fabric that they're using. So I guess my question to you is, if you love the leggings and you go, okay, I'm going to wear a pair of organic underwear underneath, which I hate to say this, I don't wear a lot of underwear with my leggings, but would you say, okay, if you're going to wear those leggings, you're okay with that underwear? Or are you saying absolutely not the, the it leggings? It depends on your level. If you're, you know, bougie organic, you can buy bougie organic with a little bit of elastin and cotton, um, organic cotton leggings. They're not going to give you that zap and that feel, right? And that tightness that women love, right? And that beauty and that accentuation of your, your beautiful bodies, right? Because women are voluptuous and gorgeous, right? So that's where Lululemon wins the day. Um, organic, at least you're protecting your, your organs a bit here, right? So the microplastics will work their way in there because they get into your bloodstream anyway, but at least you're doing something to go organic underwear, right? But there is uh, a few companies out there that are doing leggings now, and it's just going to get easier and easier as we support these companies, right? And then eventually, they'll, as you know, in business, they'll probably get bought out by Lululemon and they'll have their own organic line because we dictate it. You know, people don't think that we do, but we do. Most of the issues and things going on, it's all about positioning and money and, you know, uh, trying to uh, tr trying to find ways to win market share, right? Trying to find ways to, to have margins because a polyethylene um, Lululemon pants is very inexpensive and has massive margins. They're making bank, right? Which can drive the marketing, which can drive the sexy, which can drive all of that. You you force them over into organic cotton, right? But but think of the good that you're doing, right? You're supporting organic farms. You're getting rid of glyphosate. You're getting rid of uh, petrochemical use, right? That's when you manufacture that stuff. It's toxic, toxic chemicals you know, the, the impact that has on workers and the toxic environment and industrial occupational exposure, how your occupation, what you do poisons you, poisons that mom that has a baby. You got to think long term and about the unintended consequences. And it's hard because we love our comfort. We love our beauty. So I'm not saying 
you know, I'm I'm not shaming you for your for your Lululemon. No way. It's not my job, but it's my job to say, you know, here's how you do it. I think God gives us all wisdom, right? And we know what's best. And we have this common sense that's given to us at birth, I believe. And it's constantly coming our way. And we know it. We're just like, you know it, Chantel. You're like, mm, it's probably not the best idea, but I'm going to do it anyway, right? But at some point, I would say, you know, it's not the best idea. And before something bad happens, think out the positive benefits that it'll have in your life to make that switch and how would it long-term help the environment, help you, your children, pregnancies, health, health challenges you may be dealing with later and try to get up that energy enough to make the switch. And hey, this month, here's, the, here's, the, uh, here's my challenge to everyone watching this. Give Chantel the best organic-ish pants and tights and leggings to replace Lululemon and give her all the the thing and maybe she'll wear them and you know show them to you on um, the next podcast she does after you give that stuff. Well, yeah, and there there are different alternatives and Lululemon does have all of their material is synthetic. They're all derived from crude oil that shed microfibers. So at some point you have to pick your poisons and and I, I think at this point I need to just say, you know what, I, even though I love Lulu, I might have to be looking at some of the other alternatives. So what else? What else is number two? Oh, so when you're now go to food, like if you're so if you eat meat and you're not plant based, your meat, your meat is your number one thing to buy organic. Why? Right. You have glyphosate and chemicals um, in the grains and the glyphosate and the molds and the mold toxins. And they give mold to these. They give a, a form of mold to, uh, uh, to cows. Right because that makes them get fat quicker because the molds and the mold mycotoxins dysregulate their hormones and make them store more fat, right? So it's a, a chemical from a mold, right? So you're eating all this stuff and when you eat that, it can make you obese, it can make you sick, it can destroy your microbiome. You're getting all the heavy metals because it bioaccumulates inside of that cow because it has to eat all that grain, all that grass, if they're eating any grass, but if, say it's toxic if they're, if they're pastured at all, but all that nasty corn, that's sprayed and GMO'd and all that's getting wrapped up into their cells and their genetics. And then you consume that stuff and it's concentrated. So I'd rather eat, see you eat some corn that was GMO than a cow who just ate GMO corn for two years, right? Locked in a cage, crapping and peeing all over himself, right? So this bioaccumulation, those toxins. So in that little pound of meat, you're getting so many concentrated toxins. So if you're going to go organic and you eat meat, Get organic meat, grass-fed meat, because you go from toxic food to what I believe can be a superfood, and some scientists are saying that it's even actually good for the footprint, right? So I'm not going to go into all the science of that or argue that point, but I, the facts remain toxic, way freaking better, way less, you know, vitamin A, fat ratio is now goes from like 30 to 1 to 4 to 1, which from omega-6 to omega-3, which is exactly what your cells should be made up of in that lipid bilayer of your cell. So you're giving yourself the types of fats, good healthy fats, that are the exact ratio of your cell. You can't deny that stuff. And then dairy is the same way. Think about it. If you're a mom and you're eating toxins and you measure your, your breast milk, it's going to come out in it, right? It's going to come into your baby. Those toxins in the in biblical cord, there's all these studies. So just same with cows. You have a cow that's industrially being used for for um, dairy, all those are concentrating, right? Into the milk and then concentrating more into the fats because these are fat soluble toxins and they get into your butter and you're eating non-organic butter that is loaded with a lot of these toxins. So your, your dairy would be another one, right? That's going to concentrate down into a lot of the things you're eating and you're going to be eating toxic dairy. And that's if you eat dairy at all, but that's just a big one because a lot of people do, you know, milk, milk has really been a big one. And then, but if you're plant-based, same thing, get your soy proteins and the things that you're eating. I'm not telling people how to eat or not to eat. I'm just saying, if you're going to, if you're plant-based, make sure you're not getting GMO'd because we don't know the, the long-term effects of that. It's not been measured, but we do know that spraying it with glyphosate and these herbicides and pesticides trigger cancer and they cause all kinds of hormone dysregulation and, and health issues. So you're going to have to go organic when you do that for your pea proteins and the other proteins you're, you're doing. Try to get organic or at least know the source that they're getting. It might not be certified organic, but they know the farm and they know that daisy chain of, of supply chain 
uh, of where they're getting their products from. So really know your sourcing and don't eat fake stuff that's toxic, right? Don't be fooled by the marketing. You're plant-based. So haha, you know, I'll eat this. You're saving the planet. But really, they didn't care about the end user. They have to make sure they care about you, not just the marketing to you. Well, speaking of marketing, I want you to talk about what is the difference between grass-fed beef and organic beef? Like if one just says it's grass-fed and another one that says that it's organic. Well, that's all marketing craziness too. Organic meat, um, I don't know what the percentage is, but it has to be somewhat grass-fed. To say grass-fed, it has to be 50% pastured, you know, so you can, you don't know how much pastured these animals are, unless they say grass fed, grass finished, or 100% pasture raised, no grains, right? You really have to, to know that, right? But still. It could be raised on a, it could be a, on a organic corn or grain diet, and they could still call it organic, even though they're giving them a bunch of corn and grain. Yeah. And that's going to be, they're going to do some pasturing because it's so expensive um, to feed them like that. So there's going to be a little bit of pasture in there just out of a necessity. But what they're probably doing is, going to Wyoming, buying some cows that were 100% grass fed, right on organic farms, and then chubbing them up on grain at the end, right? Because that's just more economic for them. It's hard to get cats, cows fat just on grass, right? And tasty. Well, tasty according to our taste buds and we get used to. Like I ate a, one year I ate all venison and cow meat tasted nasty to me, right? It's crazy. But I got so used to even mule deer prepared well, but this is 100% grass fed, super clean and elk. Holy cow. Like, um, it was amazing. Right. And then I went, this was years ago, even before um, I was non toxic dad. Like, I just decided um, I'm going to, I'm going to be sustainable. I'm going to um, only eat what I harvest and, you know, and, and, and go that route. Right. And so the, it tasted funny. Right. So, but organic is going to be better, but grass fed, grass finished. And the nice thing is, is if you can get a few of you together and, and go visit a farm and, 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 and split a cow if you're a meat eater and get this, this animal, right? And you can split it up and it might not be organic, but this, this farm has been in the family for, you know, 300 years and they've never used glyphosate because they're never going to do that. And you can get a, you know, a, a really, really healthy animal, right? For, you know, less than the nine bucks a pound or 10 or 12 or in California, probably 16 bucks a pound for a grass, even just, the, just plain organic. Sure. All right. And any other tips that of something that you say you've really got to do this organic, otherwise it's going to be a nightmare? Mm. Well, you know, it, if you're going to go, if you're going to eat grains, go organic, right? And, you know, I'm not a big grain big grain guy, you know, I think it's, it, I do it sparingly personally, but if you do eat, consume a lot of grains, you go organic because glyphosate is on my top of the list for destroying your microbiome, uh, which leads to all kinds of uh, leaky gut and more inflammation because all these foreign proteins are now crossing into your bloodstream, causing inflammation, inflammation, cytokine reaction is the, the term of it. And cytokines are just hammering your body, causing friendly fire inside of your body, your immune system overreacting, which can lead to autoimmune and all kinds of health challenges. And, you know, you killing this beautiful symphony of millions and millions and millions of bacteria that work together with your genetics to create your health. And you're literally putting a poison in there to destroy it is just not good. So you got to get rid of the, you got to get rid of the glyphosate. And the only way to get rid of the glyphosate is to go organic, especially in whatever you're consuming a lot of if it's rice, and you got to be careful with rice where it's from as well, um, but organic. And I think some of the ones in California are best because they can have a lot of arsenic as well. So that's another tip. All right. This is the last question. So I have a friend of mine that she drinks really clean water all the way around. But the one place that she kind of makes an exception is at restaurants. She's like, I'm just not going to pay, you know, a lot of extra money at the restaurant for a $8 bottle of Pellegrino. She's like, it is what it is. I'll just have regular water there. How would you answer that? What would you say to her? You know, I mean, if she, how often is she eating out, right? Um, if she's on a budget and she doesn't feel like Pellegrino is not perfect, there's a little bit of heavy metals in there sometimes depending, but I personally will always do glass bottled water, right? Because I think that's 
that's the investment I'll make. But if she's going out to eat once a month, she has to know she's getting pharmaceuticals, she's getting chloride, she's getting fluoride. Um, and you could test the city and see how much they put the chloride and fluoride in it. But you're getting your neighbor's pharmaceuticals mixed into that, right? You're getting microplastics, right? Because it's all getting chewed up and, and not filtered out and it doesn't biodegrade. So you're drinking all that. If she's taking a few sips, you know, and it saves her eight bucks, her body can probably handle it. But if she's downing glasses of this water three or four days a week, I would say that's a bad decision because you, you want to control what you control. We can't control, you can control the air you breathe in here, but when you're out there, you're breathing microplastics, right? No big deal. We're not going to die. The world's not coming to an end. You're tough, right? You can still live to be a happy, hum you know, happy, healthy hundred years old. But if you're not avoiding toxins when you can, just do it. Th th my answer to that is always avoid toxins when you can, right? If you know it's there, just avoid it, right? And especially when you're consuming it at high amounts. And my answer is you shouldn't be drinking water with your meal anyway. So yes, you're Just drinking you're right. water at home because you need that stomach acid and you don't yeah. want to water it down. So you should be drinking nothing when you're out to dinner. You really just day. saved your money. You just <laughs> saved your money, right? And that's called a win-win, Chantel. That's beautiful. Right. Well, this has been great. Tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you. Yeah. So I do have a website, Non-Toxic Dad. There's some free downloads on there, um, uh, toxic home checklists and things like that, which is really cool because I'm big into creating a healthy home for people. As a matter of fact, it, I have a docu-series come out with a friend you probably know, um, Dr. Pedram Shodrai has been on The Doctors and on Dr. Oz and um, New York Times and award winning, all that, right? We have a big Netflix style docu series coming out, homesickhome.com. That's going to be free. Probably if this is released, it's going to be in the first quarter, talking March, April of 2024. So that's good to get out there. Um, it's going to be free, educating on you how to clean up your home environment and mold and EMF and all that. So free experts in homes with real people with real stories. So that's going to be real powerful. And as far as non toxic dad, um, at non toxic dad on Instagram, at non toxic dad on TikTok, YouTube, um, and all the social channels. So that's the best place that, to find me and to follow my funny, educational, and hopefully, you know, uh, entertaining enough so that it reaches not just believers like you and I, Chantel, but influences and impacts people who don't know this information. I love it. Well, you guys stay tuned. We've got another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.